you can change the world. Learn from proven change makers from all walks of life. They'll show you how to raise money, invest for impact, and so much more. You can start small, start today, and never quit. You can change the world by strengthening your superpowers. Now, welcome to the Superpowers for Good show. I'm your host, Devin Thorpe. Welcome, everyone. I, I am so excited. Today we have with us some extraordinary, truly extraordinary guests. We've got with us Rosalie Harden, uh, the founder of Neighborhood Economics, along with her colleague, Leroy Barber. This is going to be a great discussion today, so stick around. You don't want to miss this one. Rosalie, thank you so much for being here. Why don't we get started with you and ask you just to give us a, a quick overview of Neighborhood Economics and the great things that you're doing. I don't know how many of your folks that watch, that watch this TV show uh, know about SOCAP, but back in 2008, my husband, Kevin Jones, and a bunch of us started this organization called SOCAP, and we decided after about a decade of that, that we really wanted to go more downstream, if you will, and start working with, with economics in a way that could change neighborhoods for good, not for the global impact investing. That work's being done, and it's great work, but we feel felt a need to help people in, in locations, in neighborhoods um, who have grand ideas that can work to build economic justice across their neighborhoods and bring people together in a way that makes the economy work for everyone. And we um, have been working with Neighborhood Economics. I think this is our the event that we're going to have in a couple of weeks now is our seventh or eighth one. They're local events, but I'll bring in around 300 folks to uh, talk at a national level with a lot of national experts coming in about what people can do to make real changes in their neighborhoods. It's it's just such vitally important work. Um, uh, Lyra, let's, let's go to you now. Uh, why don't you just describe for us a little bit about what drew you to this uh, work and, and how you got involved with uh, mm -hmm with Rosalie? Well, uh, it, it connects with that story. When Kevin and Rosalie were doing SOCAP, uh, I got invited uh, to come and uh, see it and participate uh, as they were doing that work. Uh, and that work opened up space for me that I had never been in before around social entrepreneurship, about around impact investing, and all those things and how that can relate to uh, the local work that I was doing. And so um, that began our relationship uh, and eventually our journey to working again. So, um, so yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So Rosalie, I wonder if we could just dig down a little bit deeper on, on the, the interesting contrast uh, between the SOCAP community and uh, the neighborhood economics community that you're building. Uh, what, what was it that sort of drove you to make this shift? Oh, there's so many things that, that went into that shift. One was uh, when we were doing SOCAP, um, TED and TEDx, started um, emerging and they were having this local version of the big TED conferences and people wanted to have a local version of SOCAP. And we did some pretty deep investigation about how that might work or what that what would happen with that. And the conversations we were having at SOCAP are, are really not local conversations. They are about how um, massive amounts of money on international platforms can move into investing in things that are doing good. Of course, there are some local conversations there, but to, the idea of having a conversation in Jackson, Mississippi, like we did in 2023, about how to do impact investing for Jackson <clears throat> was just not a thing that SOCAP would ever be able to do. But um, so we started exploring what did that look like. And a, another partner of ours, Tim Sorens, came up with the idea of us doing a local economic 
conversation at called Neighborhood Economics. And we did our very first one, I think, in 2014 in Louisville, Kentucky. And we also did another thing that was very different in it is that we we are all people of faith uh, who work in SOCAP. Not any, I mean, we are mostly Christians in our organization, but we believe that faith writ large, not just Christianity, is what is is that more the glue that holds the moral compass of the economy together and that it's important for people of faith to be in conversation with the economy. And it's important for people who are working in the economy to understand why they're doing what they're doing in order to keep us moving in the same direction. It was also not a conversation that was particularly on brand. So we decided to have this more of that less about showcasing what was going on with the national economy, but more about recruiting and convening and connecting people who wanted to change local economies, helping them understand why they did it and how they could do it better, how to share ideas across the country where somebody in Fresno could be talking, who's doing a corridor project, could be talking to somebody in Birmingham who isn't doing a corridor project yet, but wants to learn about them and bring all of these uh, mayors, investors, entrepreneurs, um, business folks, and faith folks together to say, we want our economies to serve everyone in our community. How can we, how can we learn from each other and do this better? Uh, it, it's just vitally important work. I wonder, uh, Leroy, if we could ask you to just take a minute to explain how the faith community as a, an active community helps to activate this work that you're doing? Well, I think, I think my connections uh, first with SOCAP um, and then um, as Rosalie said with Tim and her uh, and their faith connections, asking the questions, can faith communities be a part of this work and can faith communities um, enhance their work within, uh, within, within local, local spaces. And I think that, um that has led to some some ways in which uh neighborhood economics connects the two right so uh here's here's a world of finance and impact investing and social entrepreneurship um with foundations and philanthropists and all those things uh and then my world at the time was around community development around uh local church work around uh missions all of those kinds of things um, and uh, neighborhood economics brings them together in a way where both are learning, both, both are coming together to impact how local economies can thrive. And I think that's where, um, that's where my excitement is about neighborhood economics and, 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 and why I'm here and uh, what we invite other people into. It is just vitally important work. And, and it is clear that community investing is a very different thing uh, than some of the, what we might describe as the Silicon Valley style social impact uh, community, right? And, and those things that we're talking about trying to scale globally. And we need those things to scale globally to solve a lot of the problems in the world of public health Absolutely. and climate change. Absolutely. But that, mm -hmm. but some of those solutions really take time to have an impact in a local community. And so the work that mm -hmm. you're doing is vitally important there. Uh, Rosalie, you've got an event coming up soon uh, here before the end of February. Tell us a little bit about that event mm -hmm. and how people can learn more and get registered, et cetera, et cetera. We are right, <clears throat> right in the middle of it. Uh, it's three weeks from now and we have um, currently about 70 speakers, I think, uh, let me do 42 sessions in addition to what's going to be on the main stage. We've got people coming from all over the country um, to talk about um, how to reverse redlining, how to deal with home ownership in a way that's equitable, how to, how to deal with commercial properties, um, businesses, how employees can buy the, the businesses and change the, turn that model upside down. Um, I wish I had my 
whiteboard facing me right now because it's all laid out right now on the whiteboard about everything that we're going to be doing. But it, it's a phenomenal um, group of people coming about 12 different foundations are represented that are from MacArthur to um, Cerdna to Heron and just uh, we, we're talking to the Magnolia Foundation there in Texas, the H.E. Butt Foundation is one of our major, uh, major supporters of this work, but they're coming to find out how they can accelerate the work. One of the things we talk about is catalytic capital and, the, and how, how philanthropists and particularly um, foundations and others that have money to that they can be patient with can go into communities and do catalytic work funding real change making uh, possibilities in a way that people have not been doing before and then we have a whole set of sessions that Leroy's particularly, Leroy also carries the title of uh, Executive Director of Faith and Finance, which is one of our uh, partner brands, if you will. We have a whole slew of content about, for people of faith, how their churches can be change makers, how, uh, for clergy, how to um, talk about economic justice in a way that is not as threatening sometimes. Sometimes folks in the in the pews get a little upset when they feel like that their uh, pastors or rabbis are being um, too political. But um, our scriptures, Muslim, Christian, Jewish, all point to economic justice as a thing that our faith demands of us. So we're trying to help pastors, rabbis understand how to have those conversations as best we can uh, in a way that is supportive of the of what they're trying to do in building a community and then to help that community become a part of the solution for economic justice in their neighborhoods. So it's, yeah. it's big work and we're excited. We also have a dance party and we're going to have barbecue <laughs> and just all sorts of great stuff in San Antonio, Texas, February 26th, 27th and 28th. Um, it's on our website, neighborhoodeconomics.org. Join us in San Antonio. It's going to be a big party and a lot of great work. Well, uh, Rosalie, this is just great work that you're doing. And I'm, I'm so excited that you're doing it. And I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us. And, uh, Leroy, too. Thank you both. Now, everyone, I, I am just honored and thrilled to have the opportunity to be here with Rosalie Harden, uh, founder of Neighborhood Economics, along with Leroy, Leroy Barber, her colleague. And we're excited about the work that they're doing, but we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to talk to both of them about their superpowers. So stick around. You don't want to miss this conversation. Learn from the world's great change makers. Find your superpower. Subscribe to the Superpowers for Good newsletter at superpowersforgood.com. Make your strengths into superpowers that will change the world. Join the super crowd today. Superpowers number four, good.com. Join us for Super Crowd 24 for two full days of wealth and impact creating content at this virtual conference on April 17th and 18th. We'll have 100 speakers and live pitch sessions. Learn how to invest like a pro and raise money from the crowd. Save 50% with the discount code SUPERCROWD at thesupercrowd.com. Join us at Super Crowd Baltimore to connect with community-focused business leaders and investors working to support diverse founders, social entrepreneurs, and community builders. Learn how to raise money from the crowd and how to invest like a pro. March 21st at the B&O Rail Museum. Register today at thesupercrowd.com. Welcome back, everyone. We are here with uh, Rosalie Harden and, and Leroy Barber, her colleague uh, from Neighborhood Economics. And uh, they're hosting a big event in uh, San Antonio, Texas on the 26th to 28th of February. Be sure to check it out at neighborhoodeconomics.org. But uh, we're going to turn our attention now to their superpowers. Uh, Rosalie, let's start with you. Uh, but, you know, you, your role in creating SOCAP makes you one of the most influential, influential people there is in the social capital market. I mean, you're just a huge big deal. And we're so grateful that you're here. But as you reflect on all that you've accomplished over your extraordinary career, what do you see as your superpower? 
Well, I, I think I would list a couple. One is that from us, from a very young age, I, this is going to sound just really strange, Devin, but from a very young age, growing up in the church, I just kind of saw through a bunch of the crap, if you will, about what people thought church was about and really saw, a, a, had a clear vision of that what my faith needed to be about was figuring out what Jesus would do and doing it and being consistent about that in how I understand my faith. That it's not, a, I, I was a parish priest, I'm an Episcopal priest, and I was a parish priest for a dozen years and loved every second of it. I miss it every day. I loved having that community, but that the, and leading that community and being in that community, I loved preaching and I loved all of that. But for me, the real action of my faith is making a difference in the world today to try to bring about on this planet and our times, the dream that God has for the world. And keeping that as a part of who I am is, is one of my superpowers. The other superpower that I think I have, I know I have, is that I can have a dinner party for 3,000 people and it not stress me out. I mean, it's, it's um, <laughs> right before SoCap, people would be saying to me, you know, you know, are you, what are you up to next week? And I'm saying, well, I'm throwing a dinner party for 3,000 people. And it, that would freak most people out. And for me, it's just the, I, the action of hospitality. One of my incredible mentors, someone who was actually very in, influential and, and instrumental in starting helping us see the vision of neighborhood economics, it's Peter Block. Peter attended the very first neighborhood economics and then invited us to Cincinnati where we've done neighborhood economics twice since then. And one of the things that is one of Peter's mantras is that leadership is convening. And I think that that's my superpower is even when I was a parish priest, that was convening. It's getting people together in a place that they feel comfortable, that they are well fed, that they uh, feel safe and are ready to have a good time and can talk about hard things and can leave to do even more exciting things than they were doing when they got there. And um, I, I, in fact, my, uh, that poster right behind me, which is um, Barack Obama with Kiss, um, paint on his yeah. face. That was a <laughs> gift from Peter Block after the uh, the first neighborhood economics in Cincinnati. Uh, a black uh, entrepreneur that he was working with in Cincinnati had done this um, this painting that Peter owns, and Peter had it made as a print. And I've got print number one, and it's a a great um, image for me to remember Peter and to remember the the challenge that he gave us to be. Um, to make sure that every event we have, that what's happening in that city when we leave is better than when we came. That's just a tremendous, tremendous goal. Uh, Leroy, mm -hmm. let's talk about you and your superpower for a He's minute. He's got you... <laughs> I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. What's your superpower, Leroy? You know, I don't know about this question. Um, I, you know, I think um, all of my life I've been a person who can look out and do something uh, or and bring people together to do something scary. Um, and, uh, and that has been kind of the mantra of my life, like, Oh, hey, let's, let's look out and change this or let's, let's do this, this thing or let's, uh, uh, my wife, my wife and I let's move into the middle of, of a neighborhood and and change it from this super hard place. And we've been able to do that uh, and live that and bring other people into that, which uh, so, so dwelling and living in community and restoring hard places and um, building relationships of unlikely allies, all of that kind of goes in that, in that pot together. And, uh, and I think that's, that may be one of the, one of the superpowers um, that I have. Um, building well, that's relationally. A, yeah, that's a great, a great superpower. And, and I hope we'll have time to come back and chat a little bit more about that. But Rosalie, I want to drill down a little bit on yours. There's so much to talk about. And, uh, you know, as a practical matter, as a convener, I want to tap into your convening skills, but I want to, I want to stop a little short 
uh, of that. And as a person of faith myself, I, I'm curious about how you you think about your sense of right and wrong and the role of faith in your life as a as a pastor and leader in the church. How do you how do you, can you think of a an example of a, a success you have that you attribute specifically to that particular personal faith uh, notion and journey? Well, I, I think SOCAP in some ways is is that. We we started out with, um, with the mantra that SOCAP would be the conference at the intersection of money and meaning. And we, I, I think particular, particularly because I was who I am and have the superpowers I have, was that we really held that held our own feet to the fire in that event, in that conference, to make sure that we that that as best we could that making money was not the primate was not the only conversation that was going on there. And it's really hard. Um, uh, one of our friends and co-founders, Gary Bowles, <clears throat> who was with us for, at the very beginning, kept saying to me, Rosalie, if you're not careful, if you don't really stick with the meaning side, money's going to take over. And one of the things that happened at SOCAP, and it's, it is a wonderful thing, um, the, the idea that was emerging in the early 2000s that you could Im invest for profit in mission-based businesses and that businesses should have a mission and that they should be doing good and that you could follow your money through that path has pr proved out to be true that you, you can do that and you can make money doing that. And I think when we had proved that you could do that and you could make money doing that, Kevin and I got a, my husband, Kevin Jones, who is uh, also a founder of SoCap, we got a lot less interested in it because the money was going to drive that market. And it is driving that market. SoCap still exists. We sold it um, in 2018. It's still going great guns. The impact investing market is is booming uh, the sector exists and so now it's like <laughs> how do we take it deeper how do we how do we get people to not just decide to put their stock portfolio uh into something that's good but also to to understand our mm -hmm. money our money the dollars in your pocket we don't have them anymore but that that credit card or that <laughs> debit card is a moral extension of who you are it right. just is and we hmm. don't think about that. And the markets don't want us to think about that. It's not in the market's interest for us to think about that. Yeah, so, I see um, how your your faith really has framed yeah. that and has made a huge difference. Leroy, as you think about your superpower, what would you call a success that you build out of your superpower? Uh, a success, I think, um, I, I want to tap so much into what Rosalie just said. I, I, I think, um, that go to the, my superpower is the inspiration and the energy uh, to help people believe that there are folks in the world like Rosalie is describing, right? Um, history has said that those, that those kind of things don't exist, right? And those kind of people aren't there and they don't care, right? And part of my superpower is to convince people on the margins in local neighborhoods who've been underneath of it for so long and not resourced that this is actually possible. These people exist and you can come meet them. We're gonna pull all of y'all together, right? And something powerful can, has, and will keep happening. I, I like, like what she just teed up, like I just, I love the idea of that because people don't believe that that's there. And, and my superpower is convincing people it's there. Come on, let's go. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, this is incredible work that you're doing. As we wrap up here, uh, Rosalie, maybe I could ask you to just take a minute and t and t remind people of the details of the upcoming San Antonio conference, how to register, how else to be engaged. In, and of course, tell people, you know, people are going to want to reach out to you. They want to connect. So tell them how they can reach out and connect with you personally. And, and then Leroy, if we get a second, you can do the same with your connection uh, details. Mm -hmm. well, let's see. Never had <laughs> uh, economics. Nice. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, neighborhood economics, San Antonio, February. Oh, let's see, where do I get that? February 26 through 28. <clears throat> it's a um, national conversation with a local impact. NeighborhoodEconomics.org, San Antonio um, uh, link there. And I'm Rosalie at R O S A L E E at NeighborhoodEconomics.org. And Leroy is Leroy at NeighborhoodEconomics.org. That's us. Fantastic. All righty. Well, listen, I want to just in, uh, invite both of you. I want you to know how much I appreciate you taking the time to be on the show and how much we want to see you succeed. The work you're doing is vitally important. Uh, it, it's exciting to think about faith communities coming together uh, across some natural divisions to work together to build better communities. We can all get behind better communities. And so kudos to you. We wish you every success. Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you. This has Thanks been fun. Me. All righty. Let's do some good.